All right, guys, we made it to the range, and I got pretty much got stuff set up, most of my stuff. So we're going to uh, obviously, I got one. I'm going to do a little range test on so uh, a one that uh, that uh, buddy of mine wanted to do a little work on. I changed out the stock on it and just kind of serviced it. And uh, of course, as usual, the mighty 17 second Crown Vic is in the house. Um, and so I got my uh, target set up. It's only set up at around, I don't know, 50 yards maybe. And this is what we're uh, working on today. I uh, took off the uh, SOCOM stock and all the cheese grater hardware that they hung on the front of this thing. It was very awkward, very heavy. And anyways, my buddy liked the uh, SOCOM or this uh, Archangel stock I put on the uh, M1 rifle I built for another buddy of mine. So he wanted me to put one on on a SOCOM so I did and um, so we're gonna we're gonna give it a whirl today see what happens the only thing I got to shoot is uh, the uh, surplus ammunition which uh, you know my buddy he doesn't reload so the only thing he'll be shooting out of it anyways is that surplus ammunition I think it's a 1984 manufacturer I think South African but I'm sure it's just NATO 147 grain 762 by 51 ammo so uh, we'll see how that thing goes, and and uh, let's give it a whirl. And uh, my first my first task is um, I'm going to uh, get the iron sights on, and then I'm going to use the iron sights to kind of do a uh, uh, like a type boresight type thing to uh, set up to uh, get the uh, scope set up so I can at least get it on paper, maybe on the first shot type of thing. And what we got there is we got a, I don't know, I think it's like maybe a 16 fixed power scope. It's a Falcon Menace scope. So, you know, it's not the cheapest scope in the world, but at the same time, it is far from the best. So at any rate, let me, uh, I need to go get my camera set up down range and uh, let's get to doing some shooting. All right, guys. Um, this is where I'm at. I gotta load up some of this surplus ammo here. I think I'll put five rounds in the mag. I say I'm gonna want to get it on. I want to get it on uh, paper, the iron sights at uh, 50 yards. And then I can use that reference point, so to speak, when I put the scope on it to kind of get it, um, kind of get it, should be close enough to get it onto paper with, uh, with, you know, hopefully the first shot. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. And this is the first time, it's the first time I've ever fired a, a SOCOM. So we'll see how that goes too. And I got my hearing protection. And then I'm going to want to take, just out of curiosity, this is a factory chamber. This is a factory built gun. Curious to see. I'll measure headspace. I want to measure a casing. Just curious to see what, uh, how they, uh, what kind of headspace they, they give it, as compared to the couple that I've uh, built recently. And as you all know by now, when I'm shooting uh, open sights or diopters with a front post, the top of my front post, my aim point is the bottom edge of the big uh, center shooting seat. So, so here we go. Let's give it a try. Get it. Okay. All right, and this has got a, a large, a large uh, aperture in the back side because it's a SOCOM. They, uh, I guess, they're not intending to this to be used as a precision rifle. But let me take a shot here and let's see where it goes. And I've already got the uh, Sadlack mount on it. I took the scope off for the time being so I can. Uh, yeah, you know, shoot it with the iron sights. So let's see here. Take a look. Windage appears to be 
pretty darn good, just maybe an inch or so high on my aim point. And uh, it's to the left a uh, couple inches, I think. I'll, I'll adjust the front sight and see if I can't get the uh, open sight zeroed. Yep. 1.633. 1.633 is the uh, factory headspace on this rifle. Interesting. Okay. I'm going to take another one here to uh, kind of verify the sights. Take another look. It's left by a couple inches. So I'm going to take and uh, move the front sight on this thing a little bit and take another shot. All right, guys, I moved the front sight over to the left a little bit. And of course, I've got the rear sight zeroed. It's uh, in the middle of its index. And um, I moved the front. This has a 21 inch sight radius, which, if I remember, will move at 100 yards, one thousandth of an inch movement of the front sight, left or right, will move the point of impact uh, about 176 thousandths. I think I calculated in inches, eight thousandths, something like that. But, anyways. I just made an arbitrary call. We'll see. We'll see where it goes now. Went over to the other side now, so I'm going to have to move the front side back a little bit. Okay, I moved it back about, I moved it back like 10 thousandths of an inch. Like I say, I'm only at 50 yards, so. Um, obviously, uh, my calculations were for 100 for the sight movement, but we'll get it figured out. Alright guys, I think we're, we're pretty much, it's within an inch of the uh, uh, windage wise of the center line. Trigger isn't actually half bad on this thing. Well, that last last shot was kind of not in not in the same realm. However, I think I'm going to make another little side adjustment on it. All right, gave it a little bit of adjustment again. My glasses are fogging up on me. All right, made a little, little adjustment up on the front side again. All right, I think that's uh. Close enough for government work and and all that nonsense. Um, I'm going to screw the scope on it now again and uh, use it iron sights to kind of line up the scope. So let's uh, let's do that. And I did at the uh, shop, I did use this laser bore sight thing. I've never been impressed with those, but uh, my buddy who owns this, he uh, received one from his kid for present. So I figured I'd, uh, figured I'd take and try it. I did a little bore sight on it at the office with that laser sight. And so I'm kind of curious to see if, if it would be even close. Because now that I have a reference point with the iron sights, I can probably get a, a better measure of uh, 
where it goes. I've never been impressed with those laser bore sights. They're so arbitrary. But so let's see here. Oh, it's going to be hugely high. And I don't know, looks like maybe four inches to the right. So we got to go down. A lot. All right, I'm going to take a shot with it there. See where it goes. Looks like I've got seven rounds in there now. Um, I try to keep track so I don't get it confused with the uh, shots I took with the iron sights. All right, with the scope, point of aim is the center of the center target. It's not too bad. Didn't kick the brass out though. I think, let me look, windage on that was pretty much dead nuts, it's just a little bit low of center. So if I didn't know better, I'd say I'm ready to send that target out to 100 yards, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm heading down range to move my target out to 100 yards. Uh, from shooting the iron sights, that was all this nonsense. I think my last shot with the iron sight was here, so that's pretty good. My aim point was opposed here. And my first shot with, after using the iron sights as a uh, reference, I uh, kind of put the scope on and moved it. And that was my first shot with the scope, which ain't too bad. So I'm going to move her down to 100 yards. Five of these surplus rounds in the mag. Okay. All right. I think we're ready to roll. 100 yards. Center bullseye. Take a look. All right, I think we're bottom edge of the uh, center target, a little bit to the left. And of course my post is, uh, post is at the bottom edge, so as far as elevation goes, that was pretty much right on. These are quarter MOA, and um, so I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna walk it up and over a little bit. All right, another shot. I 
think I see it there. I think it went right. Yep, that one went right. Elevation did come up. I'm gonna move it up some more. And I'm gonna move it back to the left a little bit. Kind of making some arbitrary adjustments here. That one went to the top edge of the uh, uh, target. So, at this point, I'm just kind of wondering if this scope, I don't know, sometimes the adjustments are funny, so I'm going to take another shot, same place. Let's give it a try. Take a look. It's almost the same place as my last shot, my... So it's obviously high, now I need to move it down, but it uh, went up. It went up a lot more than my clicks of uh, elevation were, so I don't know, we'll see. Unless those are different. Another quarter, M quarter MOA also, so I'm going to have to move it down a little bit, obviously. Take a look, about the same place. All things being equal, I'm not terribly impressed with the tracking of the scope, which doesn't surprise me. I suppose you get what you pay for in that respect. So I'm going to take another shot with it without moving anything because I've noticed uh, sometimes on cheaper scopes, you usually have to bang them with the recoil after an adjustment to get it to settle in. Well, elevation is much better, but the uh, windage now went to the left. Of course, in reality, I don't think these scopes were ever intended, or these rifles were ever intended really to be used with scopes. Um, that kind of defeats the whole purpose of what they are, I suppose. I don't know. You guys can draw your own references. I think uh, I think this scope may be. Eh. At this point, I'm not impressed with it. Take a look. I think that one just basically went right where my last one went. Those last two are reasonably close. I'm going to uh, move it two clicks to the left. Well, that's pretty funny. Because that thing is just, as soon as I move, make an adjustment, it goes off the map. I think um, I think this scope is probably pretty useless. Take one more shot. That's pretty funny. Is, is everything tight? It's as tight. It's as tight as it gets. I'm convinced this thing, that scope is junk. All right. I've seen enough of that. I'm going to pull it back off. I'm going to take some shots with it, with the uh, iron sights. Well, there you go. The uh, scope, according to what I see, is, uh, is pretty much more fucked up than a football bat. It's all over the place, guys. I would move it just a couple of clicks like that last one. I uh, moved it two clicks to the left. I had a couple go here, then I moved a couple clicks to the left, and it went over here. And then the next shot without making any adjustments went up here or something. So I'm going to pull the scope off of that thing. I'm going to take some more shots with the iron sights at 100 and see if I can get a little bit better uh, results. Let's see if we can uh, do some damage down there with the iron sights, which is really... I 
Uh, you know, the iron sights is what this thing is intended to be shot with, so let's see if I can get some hits on the, on the uh, target with the iron sights. Looks like it's to the left a little bit. Too bad, I might make another adjustment to the front sight. I'm trying to get it zeroed, keeping the rear sight uh, zeroed. It is knocking off some of the uh, st stickies I put over the holes, but it's still shooting left, so I'm going to move the front sight a little bit. All right, move the front sight over a little bit. Have another go at it. Still a little bit left, I'm gonna take another shot. And of course for my eyes, seeing the target at 100 is questionable. At this point I'm gonna say it's arbitrary as far as my uh, point of aim and stuff. This has got a huge, a huge aperture on the back and uh, so it's not, not precise. It's not like using the uh, diopter sights on my uh, K31s. All right, I think uh, I think that's pretty good, actually, considering my margin of error. Um, I. It's, it's shooting a bit high, the front of my, the top of my post at the bottom edge of the uh, center target. Um, but with this Sadlak mount on it, if I move, if I take the elevation down any, the Sadlak mount uh, is going to kind of start to get in the way of the uh, rear aperture. Um, so that can be, and it's not, it's not, um, it definitely is not down all the way or anything. So there's some adjustment for that. So that should be okay. I'm primarily concerned about getting the windage right which it apparently uh, is close close enough for SOCOM government work, I suppose. Um, I think I've seen what I, pretty much what I need to see. The scope is junk. The rifle seems to function uh, fine. And I think I'm gonna head down range. Uh, I'm gonna turn my camera on the uh, post to 200 yards. Let's just bang some rounds at the post to 200, see what happens. All right, uh, took some shots with the iron sights over left. I moved the sight a little bit, and the last ones were here. I shot high, but it's windage is pretty good. That was my last shot with the iron sights. Windage is pretty good, so I'm going to. Uh, I think I'm going to bang some rounds at the steel target or steel post at 200 yards. See how that works. All right, guys. I uh, all right. I took the uh, I took the sad the sad sack mount off of it. Um, I'm not going to add the scope on it. Doesn't really matter if the sad, sad, sad sack mount is on it or not. So I'm going to try to bang the uh, steel post out there a little bit. I know this thing is shooting high at 100. It ought to come down a little bit at uh, 200, I think. I would imagine the muzzle velocity on this is, uh, what would you think? I'm thinking probably 200 foot per second less than a 24 inch barrel or a 22 inch barrel. It's a miss. Let's take a few more. What the hell? Might as well shoot up some of this surplus ammunition. And there you go, I got a couple hits on it. Being nobody's here. I think I may try. Shooting this thing offhand.
Well, there you go. Operates fine. Good shooter. Could probably put this to good use. Um, I think the iron sights work pretty good on it. The scope is crap. And so, anyways, there you go. So calm. So calm with a Archangel stock on it. All right, guys. That's about it for my range uh, range attempt today. This is Lentcak over and out.